Okay, now that we've gotten Azure up and running, let's go ahead and go to that. And we can do that by clicking on portal azure.com. And it's going to ask you which account uh, you can sign in with your uh, Outlook account. And when you do that, you see a number of resources that are up there at the top or services up at the top that you can navigate your way through. You can also navigate your subscriptions. So if you click on subscriptions, you'll see that you've got uh, probably a student starter account subscription, and that is good. So I could go back to home at any time. I can also check out resources that are set up. I can actually create a new resource. I can go back to home and you can see up at the top, I've got a number of things that I can work with, different services. Uh, it basically gives you a short list, but if I click more services, I can see the full list of different services that are available in Azure. So you, as you can imagine, Azure is a full service development environment, cloud-based development environment. So I can set up all kinds of different things. You know, I can, uh, if I'm managing uh, the service for my company, I can have a service health, uh, basically a monitor to show how my service is working for the company. I can set up all kinds of different computing resources, networking resources, storage resources, and so forth. You can see I can develop web applications. I can even develop uh, mobile applications out here. Uh, work with a number of different types of databases, including uh, typical SQL Server databases that Microsoft uh, runs. Uh, some basic analytic tools. Uh, and then also AI and machine learning, which is where we're going to be working. So you can see even Within that set of services, there are a whole bunch of different options, including oh, genomics accounts, uh, face, facial recognition APIs, speech services, and so on. I mean, just, just many different resources available. We're going to start with Azure Machine Learning. Before we go into that, we can check out Internet of Things, uh, Mixed Reality, Integration, Identity Services, Security Services. So you can see this is something that can apply to many different uh, technology groups in the organization, depending on what they're trying to accomplish. Okay, let's see if I can get back to my Azure Machine Learning. So I click on that, and you can see right here, it says I have no workspaces to display. All right, so what I can do is I'll start off by creating a new workspace for machine learning projects, okay? And here it asks you which subscription you would like to start it from. So in your case, you want to choose your student subscription. Uh, you can choose either your student or your student starter subscription. And then you may wanna call it, uh, well, it's going to ask you to create a resource group and we can call it whatever we want. So we could call it Mata underscore UM. All right, click OK. And from here, I can give it some more details. So I can create a specific workspace to work with in my Mata resource group. So I could call it, uh, let's call it um, my first last name. And I'll call it, uh, you may call it, um, You know, just Aki, your first name, your last name, accountancy 609. So that would be a workspace you have just for this class. And you can see it has defaulted some values in for the storage account, key vault, application insights. I'm happy with those choices. Uh, you can add additional ones if you need to. I don't think you'll need to for this class. And again, uh, for the region, we can go with East US 2, and we can leave that container registry set to none. So the next thing it does is it asks us to provide networking information and enable public access from all networks. This means you're going to be able to log into this resource no matter where you happen to be. It doesn't have to be on the UM campus or in your company's uh, network. So you can just say it's available 
from wherever. And for the advanced, you can go ahead and leave that, the defaults selected. And then we can move forward to tags. And here, if you create lots of different workspaces, you can put tags on them so they're uh, easily searchable and you can find them. So this would be something more for a an Azure resource administrator for a company that needs to be able to find you know, lots of different employees' uh, resources. Uh, we can leave this one blank, uh, or you can put in a tag if you'd like. And then finally, you review what your choices are. And at that point, once you're happy with everything, you can create. Now you can see up here in the upper right, it says deployment is in progress. And this might take a few minutes to set up the resource. So we'll stop this video for now and come back up uh, and see if we can start with a basic pipeline.